Welcome back to this second part of setting up a nav mesh on a terrain object and having a character follow the player character around. So far we have added our player controller to our Jane character so that she can run around on the environment using the physics system. So we're actually using her rigid body. Now we want to set up a nav mesh on the terrain. So in your world that you've got going with the assets that I gave you, there already is a terrain object. So you can click on that in the hierarchy. Now, if I zoom out, you will be able to see that, albeit with an awful lot of pink fog. Now, let's just see if we can turn that fog off up here in the scene. There we go. So just click on this um, little toggle box thing here to pop up all the different things you can see in the scene view and just turn off the fog. So this is the terrain that I created and you can do this with any terrain object that you've got but this is the one I have. So what we're going to do now is we're going to select the terrain so select it in the scene or in the hierarchy doesn't matter where and over in the inspector we need to make it a navigation static object. So you want to go over and find where it's got static written next to the name of that object in the inspector. Drop down the little box next to it. Let me bring that in so you can actually see what it says. Okay, so what we're looking for is navigation static. So click that. Now that will make it possible to generate a nav mesh on the surface. And what you're going to get, because there's nothing else ticked, except navigation static is a little dash in that box. Okay, now that's all you have to do there. Now you get the navigation window, which is here. Now, if you're after the navigation window, you wanna go over to window and get the navigation. So AI, navigation, and that will bring up this window which I have docked over here and I usually leave it there because it just makes sense to find it there. Okay now what we're going to do is to bake this navigation mesh in. So if I just get in closer here you can see to a certain extent that it's already created a navigatable mesh over it and that's where all the blue bits are. So the blue bits represent where your nav mesh agent can travel to and the other bits are obviously where it can't. Either because there's an object there in the road, an obstacle, or there's a, a steep area where it just won't be able to climb up. Now we can define that if we look through these different tabs in the navigation. Now if we go to bake, for example, this will tell you how steep an incline that your agent is able to walk up. The size of your agent, so in this case the agent is, well we've said here that it's two meters high with a radius of 0.5 or half a meter. And that's usually what you would set for a human character because they're about on average that size. So um, we can modify this based on Chomper and his dimensions a little later on. Now, once you've got all these with the generic settings, you can just click on bake and that will bake in your nav mesh onto your navigatable areas. And you can see that you've got this here. So if you make some changes to your terrain, then you should come back and click on bake again. Now the agents that can wander around on this terrain, they're under agents. And you can see here that it's going to take a humanoid agent and it's got the settings as we had before with the max slope and height and all those things. And you can add different types. We're not going to do that. We're just going to use this basic humanoid at the moment to get it going. All right, so we've got our nav mesh. Now we want to get Chomper to walk around and follow the character. So go back into the assets folder and let's right click create. C sharp script. This one's going to be called chase player. Then open that up in your editor. First of all, Chomper needs to know who he's following around. So we're going to add in a game object. 
and we will call that player. Now notice I haven't made this public to pass it through. I'll explain that in a moment. We also need to get hold of a nav mesh agent for Chomper, which we haven't added yet, but we will shortly. Now the nav mesh agent, you can see that it's come up as an error here because you need to add in the library using Unity Engine.ai. Okay, so now down into start. Right, so now down into start, we actually set up the player. So the player is going to be set in start rather than us passing it through in the inspector. Game object dot find with tag player with a capital P. And then we want to get the agent, which will equal this dot get component nav mesh agent. Now, once we've got that, oh, looks like I need a capital G there. Okay, once we've got this agent, what we can do with it is set its destination. We want to set its destination to the player so that it will follow the player around. So down in here, I'm going to go agent.setDestination and we're going to set it to the player.transform.position. Now, the reason I'm doing this inside of update is so that the player can move around and this will constantly recalculate the path for the agent. Now that is all the code that you need. So save that. We're going to go back into Unity. You're going to get hold of that code, chase player, drag and drop it onto Chomper. Now Chomper, if you just select Chomper in the hierarchy and go to the inspector, you'll see where the script is. And as I said, there's no way to actually tell the script about our character. Instead, it's going to start looking for a game object called player. So we click on Combat Jane and you want to go to the inspector and find the tag. Now the tag is set to player. Usually when you add in your own player, it's untagged like that. But because I did this before for you, you'll find that you um, have it set as player. Now player is one of the default tags on the list for us to use. So we can just set that in there. The other thing our code is looking for is a nav mesh agent. Currently Chomper is not a nav mesh agent. So we need to add that component. So let's click Chomper, add component and start typing nav in the search and you'll find nav mesh agent and you can click that there. Now you'll see the agent type is humanoid because we've only actually got one in this whole system which is perfectly fine. In here you also have things like speed of the agent, how fast it's going to move, how fast it's going to turn with the angular speed, how fast it's going to accelerate, uh, when it's going to stop from the goal. So it will stop moving towards the goal in this case when it gets to zero. And then we've got things like the radius for avoiding obstacles, the height of obstacles to um, avoid, the quality of the obstacle avoidance. Now, if you have this set to high quality, which it is by default, then it's going to use a lot of processing to make sure that it really does avoid obstacles. But if you're not too concerned about objects sort of bumping into each other, and possibly even going through each other, you could set it down to low quality. You could even have none if you don't want them to at all. Depends on the situation that you're working on. Okay, so that's all the settings we're going to use there. Now let's just press play and we're going to move Jane around. Now, first of all, you'll have noticed that Chomper goes and rests right underneath Jane because the stopping distance is zero. So we're going to get that sort of situation. Chomper is also just sliding along the ground stuck in its idle animation because we're not controlling that either. So let's fix those things. So we're going to stop. First of all, we're going to select Chomper, come to the inspector and for the stopping distance, let's set that to two so that Chomper will stop at a reasonable distance away from Jane. Then back in our chase player code, we're going to add in some animation um, control. So animator 
age, uh, anum, not agent, anum. Then we will get our anum, just like we did with the Jane character. So anum equals this dot get component animator. Now what we want to do in the update with that animator is to test how far away Chomper is from Jane. So we're going to go if agent dot remaining distance is less than two, then the agent itself has gotten close enough to the goal destination to actually stop. So remember we set two as the stopping distance. Now we could probably put less than or equal to two just in case it ends up at an exact value of two when it stops, it might keep walking. At this point, if this is the case, then we should say that the agent can stop moving. So we'll go set bool is moving, which is our parameter on the animator, is false, which will trigger our idle animation. Else, anim.setBool is moving is going to be true like that. So that's now bringing our animation in. So save that. Let's switch back to Unity and we'll press, actually no, we're going to just go into the scene and get a little bit closer to Jane so that we can get a good view of Chomper moving along. Press play and now let's move Jane and we'll see that Chomper moves, walks, gets to the right distance of two and then decides that he's going to just stop walking. So he's using the actual nav mesh to animate. Okay, so now our agent walks on the nav mesh. In the next video, we'll come back and start to add in some nav mesh obstacles. Thanks for watching. Please support the development of more superb online learning content by subscribing. And as always, visit holistic3d.com to learn more about awesome games development books and tutorials.